Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today we are talking about mastering, and more specifically, setting up a mastering session. Now, mastering is really important. This is the final step in the music production process. This is where we are taking the song that we spent so long recording and mixing and bringing it up to commercial volume and making sure that the tone works across our project, so if we have multiple songs together, or up against other commercial releases. This is really, really crucial, but a lot of people either skip the step altogether together or they don't take the time to set up a dedicated mastering session, which is what we're going to talk about in today's video. Setting up a dedicated mastering session is really, really important, and you can do it just like the pros do in GarageBand. So that's what we're going to do. But before we get into it, I just want to remind you, this is one of the last videos in the Ultimate GarageBand Beginner's Guide series. This video series, we've walked through everything from the first time you open up GarageBand until you're exporting out your finished, mixed, and mastered song. In fact, we actually recorded a song together, mixed it together, and now we're about to master it together. So if you haven't already seen the other videos, definitely go back and check those out. And in addition to this series, I've also put together the Ultimate Garage Band Guide. This guide walks through everything, recording, mixing, mastering, shortcuts, gear you need, all that stuff, and it's completely free from the link in the description below. It's just a guide that you can download and reference anytime you need. So it's really gonna help you out. Be sure to grab it from the link in the description below. But let's go and get into today's video where we are setting up a mastering session. Now, setting up a session is really, really important for two reasons. One, because you need to shift your focus from your recording and mixing hat to your mastering engineer hat. You need to pretend like you're sending this off to a mastering engineer just like you would be if you were a pro who's been doing this for 50 years. This is still a step in the process, even if it's you doing it at home. Even if you're sending it off just back to yourself, you need to transition from that recording and mixing mindset into a mastering mindset and focus on the goals of mastering and mastering alone. So that is the first reason. The second reason is that setting up a distinct mastering session is going to help us get a better final product, especially if we're working on multiple projects or just in general, which you'll see as we go through this process. So first things first, we need to export out our finished song. So once you finish mixing your song, you do a few mix revisions if you need to, and then we're gonna export it out to bring it into the distinct mastering session. So first things first, if you haven't set your cycle region to the exact length of the song, be sure to do that. That way you've cut off any unnecessary time at the beginning and or end of the song. And then we're gonna go up to share export song to disk. And here you wanna pay attention to where it is you're actually saving it. And we wanna select wave. We wanna do the highest quality that we can do here. You wanna select uncompressed 24 bit and then export cycle area or length of cycle selected regions, all that. That's just saying that it's gonna only export out the length that we've selected in our cycle region. And then we want to name it. So we're just gonna call this stranded and expanded mix one B and export that out. Okay, so now that is exported out, we're going to create a new session. So just go up to File, New, and we're just gonna save this, create an empty project here. And then I just start with an audio track, but it doesn't really matter because we're gonna be customizing it anyway. So now that we have that, we want to bring in the song that we exported out here. So pay attention to where you actually save it and how you title it. And now we're gonna bring that into this session. You can just drag and drop it in. And we're gonna title this Mastered. And then we're going to delete this other track because we don't need it. And we're gonna hold option and click and drag this down. And we're gonna rename this one on the top, Unmastered. You'll see why that's important in the next video, but getting this set up now is just quick and easy. Okay, I'm gonna hit Y to close off my library on the side. So this session is going to have two distinct sections. We're going to have the processing that we're applying on this actual track for the mastering, and then we're also going to have a second section on our master track, which is where we're going to be metering it, which is how we're seeing how loud we're actually making it, what we're doing as we're mastering, if that makes sense. So. Our processing is going to be on the individual track and then our metering to see how loud it is is going to be on our master track. So first things first, we're just gonna take off everything on both of those places here. I'm just gonna undo all the plugins that GarageBand pre-populates onto here. And then we're going to bring up two plugins on our master track. First, we're going to bring up under TB Pro Audio MV Meter 2. Now you do have to download this, it's completely free. I'll link to it in the description below. We've been using it if you've been following along in the series, but if you don't already have it, you can grab it for free from TB Pro Audio. And we're gonna set this under factory presets here to RMS standard. You can also, if you click on the little three lines right here, you can go down to factory 
RMS standard, or if you click right here, you can just select RMS. So that's all we're gonna set up on this track here. And then we're going to bring up another plugin, and I have not mentioned this one yet on this channel. This is the Ulean Loudness Meter 2. This is really just serving one purpose, and that is monitoring our LUFS value, which is the new level that every streaming platform and everybody is looking for. It's kind of become the industry standard for mastering volume. So we're not gonna use that yet, but just so you know, that's what this plugin is for. Again, I'll link to it in the description, below it is free so be sure to grab it okay so that is our metering we have two meters here we have an rms meter that's going to show our average volume over a short period of time and then we have our ulean loudness meter which is going to show our luffs and now we're going to set up the processing that we're going to be doing on the individual track here that's actually going to be applying the mastering. So the way this flows is this is our song here. It's gonna go down through these plugins and then from there out through the master over here. So on here, we need to have an EQ and then we also need to have Buster SE, which is a bus compressor. You could use another compressor if you want. This has become my go-to for mixing and mastering a lot of the time. It's completely free from Analog Obsession. I'll link to it below. If you can support them on Patreon, definitely do, but they want you to have their plugins for free either way. So definitely grab it. This is called Buster SE. It's my go-to for mixing and mastering. And then we're going to use just the stock GarageBand limiter. And we're gonna go ahead and just turn that off and Buster SE off. And when we start in tomorrow's video, actually applying our mastering processing, we are going to start with this EQ here. Okay, so that is how you set up a mastering session. You're gonna be doing the processing on the individual track, and then that is going to run through the metering on your master track, so you can keep an eye on that at different points as you're working on your song. Now, why do I set it up this way? I set it up this way for two reasons. First of all, again, I'm putting on that different hat. I'm setting up my mastering engineer hat. This is the way pro engineers set up their mastering sessions. So just by setting it up and taking it seriously like a pro, it's gonna help me out. But two, if I'm actually working on multiple songs, I can put all of them in here. So let's just pretend like these are a whole bunch of different songs here. And I'll just drag this down here. Let's just say I have three songs on this little short EP. Well, now I can have them laid out. If we zoom out here, I can pull this so that I can lay them in the order that they would be on the actual EP. So I can listen to them and how the transitions happen between the different sections. So how does this song go into this next song and how does the tone of each of those and the volume each of those compare. So now I can add individual processing to each of these three tracks and all of that's gonna run through metering in one place. So instead of having to have metering on each individual track, I just have it all on my master track. So I only have to set up one RMS meter and one LUFS meter and I can look at the same volume for each of these. So if we just look at this for a second here, let me turn off the metronome. I can see it on this track, but then when I go over to this track here, I can also see it on my meter over here. So that way you just have metering on one place, but you can apply individual processing to each of these tracks and really get it tailored to the individual tracks. So across your project, it's going to sound great. If you're really just working on one track, you can put your meters on this same individual track processing and just bypass them when you're done with them. But in my opinion, it's better to always have the same exact process and workflow that you follow, whether you're working on one song or multiple. That way you just get very familiar and accustomed to it. Oh, and why do we have this unmastered track here? Well, we have that for comparison because the mastering process, we're going to be processing our song to master it. And we wanna make sure that we're not actually making it worse. And so by having this unmastered track here, you'll see how we use it in tomorrow's video. That is just a quick reference point to make sure that we're not making our song sound worse with the mastering processing that we're doing. It's totally possible to take a great mix and make it sound terrible with a bad master. So by setting it up that way, it's just a quick reference point. You'll see how we actually use it in tomorrow's video. Okay, in tomorrow's video, we're actually gonna be going through the mastering process. So come back for that. Before you go, be sure to grab the Ultimate GarageBand Guide from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. And as always, I'd love to hear from you. Have you been setting up a distinct mastering session for your mastering process? Let me know in the comments below. If not, are you gonna try this next time you go to master? Let me know. Okay, if this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. We're gonna actually start mastering this song. One thing at a time.